if you like electronics or a hobby that have it indirectly, such as with radio-controlled aircraft or drones, then you have often heard the term PWM. When you finish watching this video, you will understand what PWM is and what it is for. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. It is a simple but intelligent way to control digital signals that we use to vary the energy that is sent to a load or to encode information within this signal. How does PWM signals work? The digital signal PWM is a very simple type of signal, and to understand how it works, we're going to make a circuit. This, I would say, is the simplest circuit in the world, and I will use it to explain how PWM signals work. When I press the button, the circuit is completed and the voltage, that is in this case 5 volts, flows through the circuit and turns on the LED. If I release the button, the circuit is interrupted, and now the LED is off. I will graphically demonstrate what is happening with an oscilloscope. And this is what happens with the signal when I press the button. This is a digital signal. Notice that it has a square shape because the voltage increases immediately from 0 to 5 volts and vice versa. And this is the main thing you must understand. The signal has only two states. That's why you can represent binary data with this signal. 0 and 1. Or low and high. When our signal reaches 5 volts, we can say that it's high and represents a 1. When it is 0 volts, it is low or in binary 0. The frequency of a PWM signal must be constant as well as the duration of each pulse. Normally, these pulses are generated at high frequency, and by varying the time of each pulse, the average voltage at the output can be controlled. For example, if we have a 10 volt pulse which is 50% of the time low and the other 50% high, then the average voltage is 5 volts, half of the voltage and so we can change the average voltage at the output by only changing the time of the pulsations. To control the speed of a DC electric motor, for example, or the brightness of an LED or any other load. The pulsations occur with such a high frequency that it is difficult to notice their frequency in any load. In an LED, for example, when it is turned on and off quickly, the same happens with a motor. You can even hear sounds of this frequency. These frequencies are generated through electronic components, since it would be impossible for a human to achieve that speed and precision by pressing a button. If you're wondering why we're not using a variable resistor to control the energy that is sent to a load, something like a potentiometer that can stand a lot of power. Because using a resistor is not the most efficient way to control energy. Much of the energy is lost in the form of heat when passing through the resistance, and, when dealing with high-power loads, such as motors, it is simply useless. The use of PWM is the most efficient way of using energy, saving considerably more than other methods. Very important if your system uses batteries. The PWM signal that is used to control servos is a little different. This signal must be contained within a window of duration between 1000 and 2000 microseconds. This signal is then interpreted by a microcontroller to indicate to a servo what its position should be. But this only contains information that is used to control the position of a servo or acceleration of an ESE. But as I said, it is only information and cannot be used to control an electric motor. To control a DC motor, we need the type of PWM signal that I showed before. Now we are going to make a circuit that can generate that type of PWM signal. And for that, we are going to use the popular 555 timer IC. Also other cheap components like a potentiometer that will allow us to control the duty cycle of the signal. You can find the schematic to create the circuit in the description of this video. We are going to make a prototype of this circuit on the breadboard first.
Note that I'm using a transistor to control high voltages and current, since the 555IC can only channel few milliamps but not enough to run a motor or high intensity light. That's why we use the output signal to activate the transistor and it does the heavy work. Basic electronics. Having said that, let's continue with the main thing. As we can see the circuit works quite well. Now we're going to do it permanently on a PCB prototyping board. And it's ready. We have a circuit that works. During the making of this circuit I did several mistakes because it's a bit confusing when working with this kind of ports, but I finally did it. At the output I put two different kind of connectors. One for my own batteries and the other is a DC jack connector for power adapters. It works very good, but it doesn't look the best. If you want it to look professional, we can order our own designs with JLC PCB. So I'll go to ECDA, a free online software used to create PCB circuits, and I designed the circuit from scratch. In the description of this video you will find a link to this project. JLC PCB is the sponsor of this video. With them you can order up to 10 PCBs for only $2, plus shipping. If it's the first time you order with them, you will have a discount in the shipping price. The production of your design only takes 24 hours. All the links in the description below. So I'll proceed to order 5 of these boards because I don't need 10 of them. Whatever you choose, the price will still be $2. And after a couple of days, I get the package with my PCBs. This is the version 1.0, but it will be changing and improving with the time. With the same link in the description of the video you will access the project where you can download the Java file, modify the circuit or order another set of PCBs like this for yourself. And now it is time to solder all the components. Soldering all the components in this PCB is very easy, and also there are only few components. And this is the final result and it works perfectly. And here you have the comparison of the two PCBs, the one I made by hand and the one that I ordered from JLC PCB. We cannot conclude this video without mentioning Arduino. If you have an Arduino you can simplify all the circuit by uploading a sketch from the examples included in the Arduino IDE. It is called Analog In Out Serial. You will only need a potentiometer and a MOSFET transistor. This sketch was designed mainly to control the brightness of an LED, but it's basically the same PWM control. With the help of a MOSFET transistor we can control any other powerful loads. In another video we could use these techniques to make a functional project like a remote control car. Ok guys, this video took me about 2 weeks or 36 hours of work. I would really appreciate if you like this video, share it or just leave a comment. Also consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any other video like this in the near future. For now I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next project. <laughs>